Okay, now it is recording. And I'd like to introduce Brandon Burbank, age 24, diagnosed with bipolar disorder at age 19. He was born and raised in Bellingham, Washington. He's got an associate's degree in arts and science with business classes. The book, Come Back to Success, goes in depth about mental health, Brandon's life experiences related to mental health and personal, personal development slash success. And he has provided a link to Amazon to go purchase his book. And so I'd like to introduce Brandon Burbank, Come Back to Success, Brandon Burbank. Thank you so much, Lisa. And thank you so much, everyone. And uh, thank you so much, Toastmasters, for uh, this opportunity to give you guys a quick um, speech around this um, new and upcoming book titled Come Back to Success, Relentless Commitment for a Better Tomorrow. Uh, so as I continue to go into this uh, speech, I wanted to um, just uh, give you a recommendation for getting out a pen and paper uh, to take some notes during the presentation. Um, so that you can um, write any ideas or questions that you might have just to ponder upon. Uh, and then as I continue to go on, um, I wanted to give you guys a quick introduction so that you can um, really get, get a better, under, better understanding of what you're trying to accomplish with uh, the, whole, the whole goal of, of this speech to convey the message and the ideas around the book itself. So with that being said, I'll dive right in. I'm here to see you as an individual learning to grow along with your diagnosis so that you can be happy and healthy. The target audience for this specific book and also for, for um, anyone out there that is just trying to um, find success and happiness in life, um, specifically for people with mental health um, difficulties and struggles uh, such as myself, and trying to find success in that own in their own way of life, uh, as well as um, as Lita had mentioned earlier, it's really important to um, help others who are trying to find success and create attainable goals in a realistic and also yet um, yet very dramatic way of creating results that are long term as well as create results for your life. Uh, and then I'm going to continue on with just a couple of quick thoughts around um, I am living proof that you can overcome adversity when, when faced with a mental health condition like bipolar disorder. And, uh, and then I wanted to jump into the book, um, some of the content itself, and that is with uh, chapter three, which is titled Diagnosis and Affliction. So now this is uh, really encapsulates the whole uh, the whole diagnosis of um, what I experienced with being uh, diagnosed with bipolar disorder at 19. So um, with that being said, um, going through the psychiatric hospital, as well as um, just trying to find my direction in life and feeling stuck, so to speak, um, as I was living at my parents' house, as well as trying to go to college. And just upon my return from studying abroad in Barcelona, Spain, and um, and then uh, as I continue to go on in this, um, just focusing on um, just it was very difficult to try and find that um, change of pace in life that as, as being diagnosed with something like a mental health condition can be very tricky and, and, and difficult to make that adjustment. So uh, as I continue on, I wanted to also focus on how the hardest part of the journey is to accept your diagnosis understanding your diagnosis is more is the second step. So with that being said, there's a lot of just steps that you can take towards achieving that. And I had to walk myself through that in so many ways as I continue to adjust to life and also the, the, um, the responsibilities that I had to put into place for myself so that I could create results in a, and that are attainable as well as creating happiness and, and success in my life. Um, and then continue to persevere through the struggles and find the hope that you will see better days for time to come. And so everything that I'm just talking about briefly, and uh, this is related to chapter three in the book itself. So you'll be able to get more 
in depth around that and learning to understand your diagnosis for those that have one, as well as for those who are just trying to find success in their lives and trying to create results that have something that they're dealing with and they're trying to become successful through the adversity that is created in life and life itself. And accept where you are at and take action to get to where you want to go. That is a very good way of thinking. Having that mindset instilled in you will help you get towards the dreams and goals that you feel that you are destined for. And it's really, it's really difficult to do. However, you can be successful if you are willing to put in the work and effort. And writing this book, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off topic of just for a moment, and that is how writing this book, and which really focuses on everything around this discussion, has been a testimony of growth and development that has been so rewarding in itself because there's been so much work and effort in, in the creation and development of this book itself. So um, now I'm going to go move back on to the topic, moving on to chapter four, uh, which is learning how to live well, hospitalizations, halfway homes, and self-help programs. At times, learning how to live well was very uncomfortable and mentally testing. In the end, my diagnosis helped me learn more about how to radically accept what was going on in my life. I also learned how to better manage my symptoms of bipolar and understanding when I needed to do something that would help me respond positively when I was down. After going the wrong path with my life and running from my problems, it seemed that the real problem was that I had internally with how I felt about myself and my diagnosis. This led to an uncomfortable and testing experience with time in the halfway house. Um, now, this was difficult as I was thrown into an environment that was very unfamiliar and filled with the fear of unknown. Feelings of being alone continued to creep inside, especially while being in there. And however, um, the light of hope, so to speak, uh, following this, I also cover um, in the book uh, my, my experience of, uh, of transformation and development as I go to Skyland Trail, which is a mental health program in Atlanta, Georgia. And I, I also have a discussion with one of the licensed professional counselors of Skyland Trail in Atlanta, Georgia. I had a discussion with him that he um, basically interviewed him and um, some of the ideas that he has are incorporated into the book itself. So as for giving a more of a semi-academic approach for people out there who are just trying to get familiarized and then a better understanding around what mental health is is all about and how to um, certainly destigmatize that uh, that part of, of life in, in our communities and then following the steps uh, below can help save lives prevent a lot of unnecessary challenges and guide you through adversity uh, and so number one is step one develop self-awareness. Step two, confide in someone you trust who can help give you some feedback on the way you are feeling in your life at the moment. Step three, do your best to take charge of your life. Step four, accept change. Step five, be bigger than your mental illness. It's only a part of you. Step six, cope with the negative symptoms from your circumstances. And lack of acceptance in your life leads to little or no change that can be made. And then I quickly wanted to transition due to the time that we have, uh, the money and mental health. Um, so one of the things, the recommendations that I can give to you guys um, here tonight for the whole topic around money and mental health is um, step one, have a plan for what you want to save up for. Step two, consistency is key. Step three, ask for advice. Step four, believe in yourself. Step five, create attainable goals. And step six, execution, work, work, work. And then I, I have in the next chapter, I focus on uh, the writing on the walls is the, is the title. Um, and it's a collection of interviews, as I mentioned earlier, um, detailing mental illness diagnosis and experiences from others who have had um, similar 
experiences around mental health, as well as professional uh, expertise and, and uh, content. Uh, so some being from a licensed mental health counselor who has a master's in clinical psychology, as well as another one who's a leading in the forefront of um, helping those with mental health struggles um, in, C in, uh, in Seattle, near Seattle, Washington. Um, and uh, this is Dr. Jantz, who has a lot of good ideas and perspectives. So those are just a couple of quick things to think about. And with one minute left, I wanted to just, <laughs> I should have, um, let's see. Uh, so for the, mo for the majority of this, uh, this presentation, I've done a lot of speaking around mental health, and now I wanted to focus a little bit more on how to personally develop yourself, because I think for me as a, as a writer and as an entrepreneur and as a motivational speaker, my audience is not just on people with mental health struggles. It's also on people who are just trying to be successful and trying to be happier and develop themselves more as a person, because we're all human at the end of the day, and so it's really a matter of how we choose to use our strengths and abilities to move forward in the right direction to progress ourselves and, and develop ourselves as we continue to create results that will cultivate um, a, positive and a positive outlook and a positive mindset. And, um, and just to sum up, um, just a couple of quick questions that I wanted to um, give, leave you guys with to ponder is, what is your problem that you are facing with mental health? When face, um, I'll give you guys a second to, this is, this is, my presentation is officially over, but I wanted to give you guys these questions to ponder. Um, that is, that this is from me giving to you that you can help yourself develop yourself and get more, uh, more results in your life and get you farther than you were yesterday or the day before that. So um, the next question is when facing adversity, how are you focusing on taking steps to come back to success? The next question is who is your best source of help? The next question is how are you searching to be more aware about your mental health struggles? And the next question is when will you decide to take a risk that will help you get in the right direction for your life? And uh, just to close up, I found that God has helped me in times of trouble and need when I felt like there was nobody around to pick me up. Um, lastly, believe in yourself. Go get it. Go do it. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. That was a very good speech. Thank and you. we shall now dissect it. <laughs> But first, I'd like to get the timer's report, Fabiola. Yes, thank you. So I have Brandon speaking for 12 minutes and 30 seconds. 12 minutes and 30 seconds. OK, that's pretty good. That goes right in line with the Sal and Lita Cervantes overtime. So next. We shall do our, well, I shall introduce our, gen, our evaluation team, and that is led by our general evaluator. And our general evaluator for the evening is Marina. So let's give her a warm welcome. Warm welcome. Thank you, Nita. As Lita said, I'm the general evaluator, so I will help guide the evaluation portion of the meeting. During this time, we usually have one evaluator evaluate each speaker, but as we talked about, we'll do a, a round robin and give everyone a chance to share feedback for Brandon, just to make it, I think, more useful for him. I would like to ask if we can keep it to one to two minutes. Um, for this portion of the feedback, because I think that will be enough time for everybody to to give a little bit of feedback. And this will just be for Brandon's speech, and then we will go on to the other evaluation technician roles. 
Um, and as we mentioned before, if you are the court jester and you want to focus in a little bit more on the court gesture aspects of Brandon's speech during your round robin feedback, that would be helpful, but you don't have to. Obviously it's a round robin and everyone can give kind of whatever feedback came to their head to help Brandon as much as possible. But this portion will focus just on Brandon and we'll timer, if I could ask, to keep track one to two minutes, maybe the green light at one, yellow at one and a half, and red at two minutes, just so we have enough time for everybody to give feedback. Okay. May, may I ask? Yes. Is, uh, so there's not gonna be one evaluator, one main evaluator for his speech then? Correct. Okay. We're okay. all going to give feedback. That's my understanding, right? Yes. And then can I ask, I have it still on recording. Should I stop the recording or do we continue the recording? We can stop. I don't mind if you guys stop it. So what Brandon I, has got what he wanted. What does everybody else say? Do we, Are they comfortable continuing the recording or shall I stop it? I have a question. Yes. And that is, did the 12 minutes in, um, include the questions part or or did uh, Fabiola stop at, his, at the time when he said the speech is over? I, I did pause when he said the speech was over. That was 11 minutes, 15 seconds. But as okay. he continued, it seemed more like it was appropriate for yeah. me to continue counting. So, okay. So what, why don't we just I guess stop the speech, recording? The speech okay, yeah. So I'll stop minutes. recording. Sorry, Renee. And, we, I just... and you can also, you can stop recording, but then also record. Um, so that he can probably hear some information about his the answers. So at least if he wants to show someone his speech, you don't have a uh, talking. Uh, sorry, and then you can also do another record. Uh, sorry, Karika, he wants your, answers to help empower him to be better. Your thing is distorted, so he can't hear. It's really bad. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, a little better. Can we? And I was saying, if he wants to use it recording to for for like professional reasons, he can have that. But also, you can also record again now, and he can use that for feedback to follow up on. So you can okay. do like two recordings if he wants to. Okay, so I'm gonna start yeah. recording.